Hello my friends, welcome back to my channel Diamonds and Washi. My name is Katie and if you are new here, hello and welcome. And if you are back, welcome back. Uh, I am here today for my weekly WIP and chat. And if you're new, because there's always lots of new faces around, WIP stands for work in progress and chat stands for chat. So feel free to whip out your WIP and work alongside me. I'm just going to be chatting a little bit about what's been going on this past week, what I've been up to, and just family updates, crafty content updates, all the things. So I always look forward to catching up with you um, on the past week and just chatting with you a bit. And um, I'd love to hear from you in the comment section what you're up to, what you're working on while we chat away and how you've been and whatnot. So um, can you notice a theme? <laughs> so what I'm going to be working with today is all things rainbow. I just, I love coordinating accessories um, on a regular day, but give me a kit that is just chock full of rainbows like this one. And I am just the happiest camper and couldn't resist out pulling out all of the rainbowy things. So uh, the kit I'm going to be working on, it's a diamond painting called Outside the Sweet Shop. It's from Diamond Art Studio UK and is by the artist Helcorio. And um, it is currently out of stock, but they have it on order, a restock on order, and should be um, uh, getting that in. I think they're anticipating end of July, maybe sometime in August. Best way to stay up to date with that is to follow them on their social media pages. I think namely their Facebook page seems to um, be the the one that has kind of the most info and stuff. So um, I will have that linked below, of course. I apologize, by the way, if you hear barking in the background. Um, my neighbors recently got a new puppy and they leave it outside a lot. So whatever. Um, <clears throat> as far as accessories go, by the way, sorry for the scratchy voice. More on that in a bit. Let me grab some water real quick. Hopefully without being too obnoxiously loud, but accessories wise, um, this pen, this rainbow pen is from, I believe, Shimmering Canvases. So I just had a moment where I'm doubting myself. Um, I think this is one of the ones that they can kind of make to order, um, but they dye it. And so it doesn't always look exactly, excuse me, exactly the same turning out, but I just, I love it. And then this tray, it's a little bit smaller tray than I usually go for, but since this kit has a lot of confetti in it, more on that in a moment as well, I thought that I would probably be okay to try out um, one of these smaller size trays because I'm probably not gonna be doing a ton of color blocking. This is from Cat Proof Trays, cute little paw print there. Um, the size, it says Lean Boy. It's kind of the size of a deck of cards. It's like about exactly the size of a deck of cards. Um, their trays come with these lids and <clears throat> um, they're good if you have small children, pets, are klutzy like yours truly, that just snaps on there and um, you're good to go. I was like, why am I bothering to snap this on here? I'm literally about to use it, but there just so you guys can see, it's quite, it's, you know, snug, so. Um, and then, let's see, uh, I'll be using, this is my single placer, mostly just grabbed it because I had a rainbow sticker on it. This is from, um, from the Whimsical Daisy shop on Etsy, and it's called Not Your Alma's Mud. Um, Coco Nutty is the scent. And then this putty is from Butterfly Effect Wears, Rainbow Dazzle dot dot putty. Um, this minder, okay, so the sticker, it's actually a sticker that... Um, one of my viewers, one of my friends, um, turned into a minder for me. Uh, it's cast in resin with pink sparkles on the back and a, and a magnet there. But the sticker is from the shop Awesome Doodles. And awesome is in A-U-S-O-E-M, as an autistic. The uh, owner is actually autistic and um, has some really fun merch that's very, very on theme. So I also just wanted to share, I haven't done a small shop haul for this yet, but I did open this box up so that I could use it in a picture, but I have this new accessories holder from Amazing Craft Shop <laughs> on Etsy. Uh, she just did a pride drop uh, last week and I needed this so bad. And honestly, I feel like I'm at a point where I am gonna want like multiple of those accessories holders from her shop because they just, so I, I work in a, I live in a very small space and where I work is actually at my kitchen table. So I'm often 
tearing down so that you know we can eat meals here <laughs> so it's a temporary workspace for me but this perfectly holds like a tray and um you know pens and like a putty and minder and wax and anything that i need to go and so i can just put stuff in there and just have it sitting there and all i have to do is grab my canvas and my diamonds and then i just grab that and it has everything i need in it it's just very easy to then also then pack up and go so um, I think that she does still have some openings available for customs. She's going to just be um, opening up for customs like as she's able. I know she just started a new job um, and she doesn't want to totally overwhelm herself. Uh, but you can follow her Etsy shop and it'll, you know, check back in. And if, you know, she closes down custom orders and stuff. But anyway, so let me get my pen loaded up. I didn't even open this up and see. That's super cute. That's super cute. Mm, it smells fruity. Like, uh, is that supposed to be Fruit Loop scented? Because that's kind of what, <laughs> that's kind of the vibe I'm getting. Uh, so for putty like this, what I will usually just try to do is just um, load it by just going right up on the edge and then pressing down on a flat surface. And sometimes that loads it pretty well. Sometimes I have to then also roll off a little bit extra to um, make sure it's fully loaded up and ready to go, but yeah, oh, I don't want to mess up like that beautiful rainbow spread there. I'm like, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm a little into aesthetics here, so I'm like, let me see if I can fix it. Oh, I'm going to make it worse. I'm going to make it worse. I'm going to make it worse. Anyway, hi, how are you guys doing today? <laughs> Happy Monday. Um, I hope your week is off to a wonderful start. I know many of us are on i say us as if i'm like a child in school uh, or a teacher or something i'm not um i have small children but many of us are kind of kicking off summer mode and i'm definitely feeling that yeah, that's a little better anyway i'm definitely feeling that that as well oh look at that fun little rainbow load in there oh my gosh that's so cute it's gonna get all messed up once i start actually diamond painting but that's really fun um but yes it's it's hard to believe the last it feels like the last thing that I actually filmed for you guys was like last week's whip and chat <laughs> more on that in a minute apparently I've really used this one before okay I wonder how old this one is I've been diamond painting for over three years now and I'm sure I've been buying not your mama's mud for almost that long and so some of the not your mama's mud some of the some of these products that I have I've had for a long time I guess that speaks to the longevity of it but yeah, I so I started in on this kit. I'm realizing I what was my brain doing? I forgot to do a washi tape border on this kit. I haven't laid that down yet. I literally I have in my little accessories holder. I'm pretty sure this is the washi I want to use. It's from Simply Gilded. But I thought it was perfect because it's got like the dark background and then the like rainbow iridescent thing and then kind of the silver sprinkling of stars throughout it. I don't oh, okay. Well, <laughs> It'll be fine. The glue barely goes past the edge of the drill field. But anyway, that's what that's one of the things I use washi tape for. And I love coordinating the washi tape that goes around the border. I love coordinating that with the kit itself. As far as the washi I use to section off my canvas, I just use skinny washi, like whatever I have handy. I don't, because I just throw, I end up tossing it <clears throat> once I finish the section or the kit. So anyway yes i finally started this kit i say finally because i did barely any diamond painting last week um but i had filmed all of the kitting up related videos for this kit and so it was all kitted up and just sitting and waiting <laughs> for me to start it um and i was just i was just too sick but i was excited i actually started it yesterday and i did this whole section <laughs> just this little section and you know what you don't know how long it took me a long time um but it, it was it's been fun actually to get back in the groove of working on a really high color count kit i feel like it it really does engage a different part of your brain um being a really high color kit in large part because when i'm looking at these symbols um first when I open up a section like this what I'm doing is I'm looking and I'm saying okay what symbol immediately grabs my eye what's going to be really easy for me to find in place 
Um, for me, it's probably like this little, this symbol right here that's just like a little, a, it's a circle with a slash through it on like a blue background. Um, I could color block. This section actually has some color blocking. I don't have a sticker with the image to show you, but right here is a silhouette of a person carrying an umbrella through the rain. And so this person, the, the silhouette of their body is largely this, the symbol that's the letter Y. But so first I start with, okay, let me pick a symbol. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start with this one. And um, then I go to my trays and have to find that symbol. Now I did in my kitting up video, I showed you my whole process and approach to kitting up this project, including my learnings as we, <laughs> as I went now, I did like a huge, huge change, like half an hour into it, an hour into it. Um, but I am all kitted up in these Elizabeth Ward containers and then I look and see, okay, I found the tray that has the blues in it, which is this one here. And I tried to group them roughly even like the ones that have, so there's the ones with the black symbol down here and the ones with the white, actually it's kind of a yellow, an off yellow um, symbol here. And so that's the symbol that I need. So I'm gonna grab it. But right now what's happening is that I'm in the very, very early stages of doing a high color kit, which means that at the moment I'm still having to do a lot of muscle, like learning that muscle memory kind of learning in my head, okay, this is where that symbol is, even though it is organized by color. Um, there is still, I feel like, a bit of a learning curve to just get used to like, okay, here are these colors and this tray, here's these colors and that tray. And then some of these symbols on this canvas, I'll just see if I can find a good example in here. Um, the printing on the canvas is slightly different from the printing on the sticker. And so, and there are some symbols that are really similar. For example, I can show you guys these. I don't know if we have, yeah, we do. We have one of these symbols right here on the canvas, which you guys, you can't really see. Can I, will this camera let me zoom in? Okay, so this symbol way up here, see it's kind of like a black outline of a teardrop. Well, I have both of these symbols. <laughs> um, and it does very much look like this one on the top. But you can see why when I saw this, oh, well, let me just fling that. I'm trying to do things one handed. It's not working out for me. That when I saw that this one was also an option, I was like, ooh, let me find on the canvas where this symbol is and make sure that I'm really seeing the distinction between this as it's printed here and this darker yellow background version where the symbol is more centered in the box, if that makes sense. So. You see me back out to about where we were. Okay. Um, so that's the phase that I'm in right now is getting to know the symbols, which by the way, I am not holding against the company that they have some similar symbols. Um, I feel like when you're working with having to come up with 197 symbols that there's gonna be some ones that are similar. And I, I'm sure that they don't control things with their the manufacturer, like all the way down to exactly what symbols are used. Um, but I just, I, like I said, I feel like I'm just kind of in the learning stages of this canvas. And so the actual act of diamond painting here is going much slower because I'm learning it. Once I get into it and I just know like, oh yes, okay, so I know this symbol is a symbol and this symbol is a symbol, it should pick up. <laughs> But it does. It feels like it's going slow because I I just, it's new. It's new to me. So, okay, let's do this one color that there's a decent amount of. Is that static? Okay, we do have some drills clumping together. I think that, yeah, that's totally static. Okay, I don't have a bag of dryer sheets handy. There's one in there. Um, This should still be, I can probably still work with this. Um, okay, yeah, so um, I did finish this this one little section over here. I ended up breaking this down into 10 centimeter by 10 centimeter sections, which is a little bit small for me, um, but is bigger than the se size sections that I worked on when I did my Josephine Wall from Diamond Painting Deutschland canvases, you know, one, two years ago. Um, so 
I, I don't know. I just I kind of thought that this this canvas and the way that it was grouping its colors that maybe I could get away with this ten by ten centimeter section. Um, but I just taped off the one row. And if I get through it, I'm like, you know, I think I really need to go with a smaller size section after all. That's easy enough to change in the next the next row or column. I ended up deciding to start over here. I'm on the bottom right corner of the painting itself. Um, normally, I actually find myself starting at like the bottom left corner of paintings, but I, whenever I do start a new project and I'm debating where I want to start on it, I always do tend to look at, okay, where is the focal point of the artwork? Where's the most interesting part of the artwork to me? Um, and or where is, like, like at what point in the artwork will I, will, will I feel like, okay, now I'm kind of in the home stretch? where I'll either feel motivated because there's something interesting happening like the subject matter, or in the case of this piece, over on the left side of the canvas, there's some, there's a lot more color blocking actually. There's some, there's a lot of silhouettes going on. And so I thought it might be nice to save that for the end so that once I get towards the end, if I'm feeling some project fat fatigue, at least I, I have some color blocking to give me a little bit of a, of a respite so um, time will tell if that was the right decision um, best laid plans and all that which I discovered as I did my kidding up uh, on this project which is where I was like okay well here's what I used before I'm gonna do these like little suitcases and as soon as I started kidding it up I just was like this is going to take me forever and I didn't fully map out like okay here's i have this many of this color and this many of this color and so i want to group it this way and group it that way and i just was like nope nope just <laughs> rip up those plans and let's just switch over to elizabeth awards um i know someone someone actually left a comment said, i was surprised when you started that you didn't just start with elizabeth awards believe it or not i every once in a while i do try to branch out a little bit <laughs> um i I know that, okay, the nice thing about Elizabeth Wards though is that they're not attached to a particular small shop. I don't feel like I am slighting a particular small shop if I am showing, it doesn't feel like I'm showing favoritism, you know? It's like I buy them from Amazon. I don't know a lot of, I don't know small shops that smell, that smell, no, that sell. <laughs> um, that's, so, why did my brain do that? Uh, that sell, drill storage or drill organization and so it's you know i'm no i'm just buying from big corporations <laughs> uh and so it's easy for me to just go you know what nope elizabeth ward storage containers are my ride or die like they're just they're so easy they're uh, they're interchangeable it's just it's easy and it works perfectly for me um but i do i do have other storage containers and i just thought you know this is a different kind of project i knew that that suitcase system had worked for me in the past so i just i thought that that was the right call um i also i mean elizabeth ward storage containers can be kind of expensive and i don't have an infinite number of them and i'm now i'm tying up three of them for this project <laughs> <laughs> so um, I suppose that's motivation to, to get it done or I'll have to use some of my other storage options when I want to work on other projects. But um, yeah, anyway, um, it's, it's funny. I try really hard to not get totally locked into, okay, this is my favorite um, accessory thing or this is my favorite like diamond painting company that I buy kits from and stuff like that. Uh, it's hard not to have ones that I fall back on after three years of this craft and being able to recognize like, okay, yeah, this is what I personally gravitate towards. But um, it's why I remind myself and I, I say it frequently here on my channel to sort of keep myself, uh, I don't know, honest, <laughs> just saying like, okay, I want to make sure and, and continue to keep it a really core value of mine to try out a variety of different companies, both in terms of kits and accessories, um, and to fight to remain as unbiased as possible. Uh, that's something that I, as a consumer, as a customer, value highly and what I look for. It's what I want when I'm watching 
um, when I'm watching content creators, watching reviews, it's, you know, I want to get a sense for, okay, are they, um, are they just really pushing this company really heavily because they're an affiliate or are they not branching out, you know, that sort of thing. But, um, uh, I, like I said, it's, it, it's hard. It's something that I, I try to keep in mind and be really intentional about and to really try to rotate through, um, different accessories that I use and, and that sort of thing and, and not be afraid to try out new companies. Um, especially lately, there's a ton, a ton, a ton of companies. I, I can't keep up with all of them. Unfortunately, as much as I wish I could, uh, that are, you know, started selling kits or, uh, selling accessories, but I, I do try. <laughs> um, but I, I don't want any companies that I choose to have an affiliate relationship with or have other connections with, uh, to be ones that I'm afraid to give criticism or critique to. I think that there's always a really respectful way to give feedback. Um, and it's also a pet peeve of mine if a company isn't receptive to feedback. And uh, so even the, the select few companies that I am an affiliate for, like you'll still hear me say like really flat out if I have an issue, um, you know, like Diamond Art Club, hey, what's going on with these these three ten diamonds? They're really like not the quality that I would expect. and. Um, I'm assuming you want to know about it. That's that's my shorthand sort of sassy way of, of putting it. Um, or, you know, for, for a while, like, I was an affiliate for Die Moon Shop. I'm not totally sure what's going on over there, by the way, with the changes they've got coming. Um, but I, I spent a lot of time going back and forth with them, trying to share feedback and my concerns with them. So I, I like to think that I do an okay job of being somewhat unbiased and not afraid to give, uh, not not afraid to hold companies that I'm an affiliate with to uh, as high a standard, maybe even a higher standard than ones I'm not. Um, I also, I try not to become an affiliate for every company under the, <laughs> under the sun that asks. Um, and to not become an affiliate for a company that I haven't worked on and completed at least one kit for and can have that experience. Hopefully it's just like a, I bought this kit. Um, I love when I can buy a kit sort of blind, like if a company doesn't know that, you know, that doesn't know my, my name. I mean, I posted a lot on social media under my personal Facebook profile, um, especially. And so uh, my name has, you know, is sometimes recognized, but um, I love when I can have like a blind buy because <laughs> um, then I feel like, okay, I'm getting as close an experience as possible to what you could come to ex that you, that you might expect as a customer. Um, that I think is, is, is valuable. Um, sorry, I'm, I'm picking, I'm picking symbols and double checking ones that I think that it's like, oh no, is there a, um, might there be one that's close and I want to make sure that I'm not uh, mixing any up. Um, what should we do next? Okay, let's shift over to some of these yellow symbols. We got this little cute little letter U. It's real cute. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm, that, that is something that I'm cognizant of. And I'm not perfect though. I'm totally, totally not perfect. And it's, I mean, it is also hard when there are companies that it's like, okay, I know that they, this company carries artists that I really love and the quality is really consistent and is there. And so it's hard not to fall into like, well, yeah, no, I buy from this company a lot or they have like really wide and good selection. And so you're going to see more of them or my stash is comprised more of them just because that like I'm thinking of like Diamond Art Club has hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of kits on their website. And a lot of small shops don't have that. Um, that doesn't mean that small shops don't have anything to offer. So, um, same thing with accessories. It's really tempting to be like, well, I know that this putty works really, really well for me. Um, and it's a company I feel good about supporting, or I know that this tray works really well for me. And so it's tempting to be like, well, that's comfortable. Like, that's easy. That's, I'm just going to fall back on that. Cause I know it works like, no, 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 let's keep testing out other things, both for your guys' sake and for myself. Like I want to, I don't know. I don't want to miss out on what if someone released something that's really cool and amazing out there. <laughs> anyway, um, I am, especially with working on this kit, because right now my only whips are this kit, 
um, my custom, my Summer with the Masters custom that I have from Jaded Gem Shop, and um, my cross stitch conversion. And so right now, all I have are these really large, square, confetti-heavy kits in my life. Um, and I don't feel like it's going to stop. I have a, a non-Summer with the Masters custom coming in from Jaded Gem Shop. It's of some fan art of my, my probably my favorite TV show of all time. Um, and I got permission from the artist to get this piece as a custom diamond painting. And I think that it came in. And like, as in, I think that it's in Jaded Gem Shop's hands because she, uh, everything is made to order. And then it comes to her home and then she ships it out from there. So I'm pretty sure that it's in. And like, it's going to be extremely difficult to not start that as soon as it's in my hands. I'm so flipping excited. Um, and just thrilled that like I heard back because I contacted a few different artists, um, some fan artists, to see if I could get permission to use their artwork, to get a custom of their artwork as a diamond painting. Um, even offered to like compensate them, like, like can I buy? It? Do you have a print shop? Do you have like a Ko-Fi or something like that? Um, but I think probably a lot of people see messages or questions like that and they're like what is this person talking about is this spam like and so, or they're just really busy who knows and so i you know you don't necessarily hear back from everyone that you reach out to um but this i'm i'm just i'm excited about it that there will definitely be an unboxing for that kit um i need pinks where are the pinks I think they're in this tray so what I have is I have the three Elizabeth Ward storage containers and I basically, I have two stacked, like two stacked right on top of each other right here. And then the the third is sitting next to it over here. So I can just, I can shift. I don't have really have the space to put all three in front of me, like in a big old arc or whatever, but just having one, one stacked is pretty easy. So I'm able to see two at any given time. We'll see. I'm going to see if this, this changes at all as I keep working on this kit, but um, yeah, this small 10 by 10 centimeter section, it's like a lot of these colors, like this one I just pulled, I'm only going to have two of. This is another reason I'm happy to be working out of Elizabeth Ward storage containers is because they really are perfect for pick and placing, which is where I just, I don't pour into a tray. I just find a diamond that's facing up and I just pick it up with my pen, save some time. Um, should have included that and that's one of the things I wish I would have included in my speedy diamond painting tips video um which I got a comment on that video this past week that was like but why would you dime, want to diamond paint quickly there's you know it, the craft is about like relaxing and being like leisurely and I was like you didn't watch the video did you I didn't say that but I just thought it was like that's literally one of the very very first things that I say like you are correct you don't have to paint fast <laughs> diamond paint fast this is just for those of you that are curious and asking okay so like the printing of this symbol on the canvas the blue background is a brighter blue here and the pink is a more vibrant pink okay some orienting it's the same yes yeah, this like kind of corner symbol and I always especially when it comes to come on camera um symbols that have arrows or corners or stuff like that um orient your sticker sheet your your whatever how whatever you're working out of like these storage containers where you're looking at the symbol orient it the same direction as you're working on the canvas and that'll make it a lot less likely to mix it up but just because this is part of the learning that I was mentioning um the printing is slightly different on the canvas I am just going to do a quick glance through my other blue colors just to be 100% sure that I don't see this symbol. I don't think that they, they wouldn't do something that is that similar. I really, really highly doubt it. And no, I don't see any. Okay. <coughs> that's got to be it. But that's, that's just an example of that. This takes a little extra time because I'm just double checking to make sure. The other thing I've been doing is then I'll check on the legend that's printed on the side of the canvas 
and I'll look at how it's printed on the legend and you can't see it because it's just out of frame. But I can see the printing on the legend and confirm it's the same exact DMC code and this like legend number here, um, the same exact one and see that the printing on the legend on the canvas is also indeed a little bit brighter than it's printed on the sticker. Just in case Diamond Art Studio <laughs> UK is watching, because um, they did leave a comment on my last whip and chat, which by the way, I, I haven't responded to any comments this week at all because I was really sick, but um, the, please don't take it personally if I if I don't respond to your comment. It's um, uh, I it's something that I actively struggle with keeping up with, and I know that that bothers some people, and I'm I'm genuinely very sorry. I it's just I have a really difficult time keeping up with comments. But anyway, if they're watching, I don't want anyone them or you guys to think this is a criticism. Uh, I, you know, printing saturation, like printing on sticker paper for these symbols versus printing on a canvas. It's just, it's just going to be different, right? So it's, it is what it is. Um, what were we talking about? I feel like I went tangent, 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 and I have no idea where I started, but that's okay. Um, I, no, it's all right. We'll just, we'll move on. Um, but this past week. What's been going on this past week? So I posted my whip and chat on Monday morning or scheduled it to go up on Monday morning. And I filmed that whip and chat on Sunday evening. I'm trying to, I didn't go back and listen, but it's very likely that I was maybe starting to sound a little bit hoarse and or coughing like a little bit in that whip and chat. And partway through the day on, on Sunday, I'd kind of thought, am I starting to feel a little under the weather? I'm feeling maybe just a little bit off. Um, uh, you know, we'll just, we'll, maybe it's allergies. We'll see. Well, then I woke up on Monday just feeling like hot garbage. I had not slept very well on Sunday night. I had taken like a decongestant. I took some Advil because I was starting to just feel a little bit of that, that like achy malaise feeling that sometimes for me, that often means like maybe a low grade fever or yes, a low grade fever. Um, and then Monday, I just steadily was getting worse and worse and worse and worse. And I just felt absolutely terrible. By the end of the day, I was having to um, take Advil and Tylenol. Like I was alternating those um, just to feel like marginally human. And then when I fell asleep on Monday night, I feel like I just didn't even sleep that night. I feel like I was just in that awful like fever dream stage. And it was, I feel like that night just passed in a series of like, has it been three hours yet? Can I take the next thing? And my throat was getting steadily and steadily worse and, and more sore. <clears throat> and then Tuesday morning, I was just like, I feel like I've been hit by a truck. I feel like I can't move like every, like that gift, that gift from Parks and Rec, it's like everything hurts and I'm dying. It was just terrible. And I was, you know, thank goodness, like Adam was able to get the kiddos ready for school and I'm moping a little bit. Cause I'm like, it's the kiddos last week of school. I want to be enjoying it. I have stuff to get done. Um, and I was like, man, my throat is just killing me. And I, my mom was like, I had been texting with my mom and she and I'm like, should you take a test, you know, for, you know what, um, the Rona. And I was like, I really don't think that's what's going on. Um, and then I looked in the mirror, um, like kind of stuck out my tongue and looked in my throat in the mirror. And I was like, <gasps> I think I have strep. And I, because you just, if you know, you know, I'm not going to gross anyone out any more than that. Um, and I just went in and told him like, I'm driving myself to urgent care right now because I would put a significant amount of money on that I have strep throat. Um, and went to urgent care and sure enough, strep throat. So the good news about that though, is that like, that's something that they can do something about antibiotics. <laughs> So uh, got on those right away, and I just was like, uh, okay, when you have strep throat, when you swallow, it just feels like it, it is so excruciating. Like I was like tensing up anytime I had to swallow, and then I would like just jolt in pain because it was so, 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 so terrible. Um, it's like you're swallowing shards of glass. It's terrible. 
Um, and then I'm going down the rabbit hole of like, where did I get it? Um, I'm thinking, well, Micah has a little bit of a runny nose and Connor has a little bit of a cough. Could one of them have, does one of them actually have it? And then I'm freaking out thinking, did I send one of my kids to school with strep? But neither of them had a fever, anything like beyond very, 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 very minor, like little things, a little bit of a runny nose, tiny bit of a cough. Um, no fever. Like I was asking Connor a lot, like, does your throat hurt? He's like, no, just a little scratchy. I'm like, well, if it were strep, like he'd be talking about how it hurts. So I'm thinking, you know, maybe one of them just carried it to me. Like maybe I picked it up out and about somewhere. I don't, I don't know. Um, and then I went down this whole rabbit hole of like, well, okay. There's also this other crazy coincidence, which is probably, I probably just a coincidence, but okay, follow me here. So we have a like a filtration system um, next to our sink that's it's called a reverse osmosis machine, which it just it it's basically a water filtration system. It's a little separate spout next to your kitchen sink where you can get water from uh, that's you know filtered and whatnot. And ours has been on the fritz. We actually we need to have a plumber come out. We might just need to have the whole thing replaced at this point. Um, but it's just like there's no pressure in it anymore. And so we had switched over and this is, it's been a few months. Uh, so the last time I had used my reusable water tumblers, like the, you know, the tall plastic Starbucks cups or whatever had been probably six months ago, back in December, January, maybe, um, which I had a really horrific bout of strep in December, the end, very end of December. Um, you can see where this is going, right? So I, I hadn't been using them. We were doing the plastic water bottle thing, which yes, I know is really incredibly terrible for the environment. Um, that's just what we needed to do for, for a, a few months there. And then I finally bought a Brita pitcher to keep in our fridge that we could just fill up with water from the sink. It'll filter into the pitcher and then we'll drink out of that. So we'd gotten that and I had just been drinking out of like glasses or whatever. And then I thought, oh, like I can just, well, I, I can, now I can drink out of my reusable cups again. I started using those a few weeks ago and then I get this out of nowhere strep throat and no one else has it. So there is a tiny part of me that is wondering, I'm like, could strep bacteria live in a straw? Like for six months, that seems kind of outrageous, right? And yes, these had been cleaned. I used, I used my Dawn dish soap and all that, but I hadn't done like a massive like disinfecting bath. I knew to do the things that when you have strep or other illnesses, especially I think strep, throw away your toothbrush or toothbrush heads um, anytime you've got it. I, you know, I'd done that, but I just hadn't thought like of needing to disinfect like the reusable straws that came with those tumblers. So now I'm wondering, could it have been that? That, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. That does seem a little bit far-fetched. Um, any microbiologists in here want to jump in? Are there microbiologists watching my, is that the field it would be? Or immunobiologists? I don't know. But anyway, that I just, that did get my brain going. I was like, it seems awfully coincidental. The last time I was using these was back when I had strep in December. And then I start using these again. And within a couple weeks, I've got it again. So I don't know. I don't know, you guys. That was just, that's what, that's what my mind does. I look for patterns, pattern recognition. Um, but yeah, no, I'm, <clears throat> it took a, it took several days for me to feel human again, even on the antibiotics. And even now I feel like now that I'm able to sleep soundly and sleep well, that my, my body is like, okay, now you really need like lots of sleep. I feel like I'm sleeping really hard and really deeply. Uh, so I'm just trying to listen to my body and get plenty of rest for sure. Um, and it's taking my antibiotics and all that stuff. But, uh, I am like probably 80% better at this point. I was obviously not able to film at all this past week. I barely was able to get it together to do my sneak peek, which by the way, I am positive if I would have just sent them a message and said, Hey, I'm too sick to film. They, they would not have been mad. <laughs> um, they would have been like, yeah, no rest. Don't, don't film, go rest. Um, but I was able to pop in a cough drop and it, that was an easy enough video. And then my, I did do the summer with the masters video, but I wasn't feeling up to filming that on Friday. So I just bumped it to Sunday. Um, which that's, you know, today is when that summer with the masters week three video went up and then 
um, Saturday, the kidding up video that went up, I had had all of those clips already filmed prior to getting sick. I just hadn't had the energy to edit them together until <laughs> until then. But I was glad I had that in my back pocket. But now I'm officially out of, I don't have any other videos in reserve. So I'm like, well, time to start playing some catch up again this week. And the kiddos are out of school. So that will, it does change up kind of how I have to approach and handle my filming and editing um, because typically what I do when they're in school is that I will film in the mornings. I get to take advantage of some nice, some nice natural light and, um, it just feels like, okay, I'm getting some work done like during the day. Um, I, I use the term work extremely loosely. <laughs> it's not really work, but, um, it doesn't feel like it anyway, but I, I, yeah, I usually do that during the day and then, when I need to edit, I'll just, I'll do that in the evenings when I have some downtime. But then it's like if Adam and I want to watch a show or hang out or chat or whatever, I can do that. And that's not really interrupted by filming. And when the kids are out of school, that makes it really tricky, <laughs> almost impossible to film in the mornings when they're around because my youngest in particular is just... He's very active. He's very chatty. Of course, he wants like me to be playing with him and interacting with him. And um, if I really tried to do any serious filming, it would it would just be difficult. I'd have a hard time focusing as well. So it means that not only is filming happening in the evenings, so I'm adding that in time wise. Um, but I'm also it's like editing and uploading and everything that goes into like the post filming process happens in the evenings as well. So I just, I want to be intentional about it. Um, Micah will start up to summer school in a week and a half or something. Uh, so then he'll be gone in the mornings and my oldest is like old enough and chill enough to understand the idea of like, okay, like mom's gonna do, you know, some, some videos. So, um, like let's, if you, let me know if you need anything first, like do you need snacks, whatever. Okay. Now if you could just sit and just hang, mommy's going to film and then, <laughs> and then we, and then we can hang out. Um, but he's old enough to get that. My youngest, pff, forget that, <laughs> but they both had a good last week of school. Um, it was really just a pure fun week for both of them. Um, Connor, had kind of like really lightly themed days each day uh leading up to the last day of school i don't remember what the first day was what monday was but then the second day was um game day he got to bring in pick out like a board game to bring in and they would played board games that day and then okay, where's that symbol looking for the plus sign that might be under the blues or the grays let's see um, hold on. Did I see that downward pointing arrow? No, it must have been. Oh, yeah, there it is. Okay. Um, <clears throat> uh, and then the next day was movie day. And he got to, they got to eat, pick if they wanted to bring in like a pillow and blanket or some stuffed animals. So he took in his pillow and blanket. And then the last day of school was just the last day of school. Um, and he he is he is a little bit sad to be oh it's under the purples and pinks okay see it's kind of like a pale lavender the printing on the canvas my eyes read it as more of a pale blue or gray but not a big deal that is something that i ooh, that's got a little tab on it um i'm a little curious about there was one symbol in particular I'll have to check and take a picture. I think it was in the browns section or the oranges. And the color was really different from the background color on the canvas. And I double checked. I even Googled the DMC number. I just wanted to make sure that that's still the correct color intended to be there. Anyway. Uh, but yeah, Connor's is a little bit sad because he's going to be going to a different school in the fall. And he's been saying, you know, he did say, he's like, oh, I'm really going to miss so-and-so, like one of his, one of his friends that he made. Um, but I, you know, that kind of, of course that makes you as a parent question like, oh, did we make, like, is this the right decision? Um, I hope that he's still going to make friends and have like that it'll still be a good fit like at our new school and stuff like that um 
but yeah, that did have me go, oh, I know, buddy. Like, I'm sorry, but there, you're going to have lots of new friends that you get to make it at your new school. Um, so it's, it's interesting. Like, as my kids are getting older, I'm seeing, like, the different ways that these kinds of things play out. Um, and it's, yeah, it's just been an interesting journey because my kids have been in special ed basically from preschool or pre-preschool. And now it's like, as they're getting older, it's like, oh, now they're old enough to be able to communicate what their opinions and their wants are. And we want to make sure we take those kinds of things into consideration. And, um, you know, yeah. So that's just, that's been on my brain. Uh, but they are, um, happy to be kicking off summer. <laughs> the weather finally turned here too, which is nice. And we are... In what feels a lot more like summer weather. We've been in like the low low 80s, high 70s Fahrenheit here. And Mike in particular is living his best life <laughs> right now. Um, because we have this back patio area. And is that the one? Maybe that's the one. Yeah, this one on the canvas is printed as like a bluish purple. But the color in here is a taupe. So I wonder. Um, but yes, yeah, so we have this back patio and yard area, and it's warm enough now that we can fill up the kiddie pool that we have back there. And so the past couple of days, Micah has basically just been running around the backyard buck naked. <laughs> just like I said, ooh, those are similar. Ooh, let me check, let me check. Did I put the right similar? You see, go, see those two? Another learning curve moment. Okay, I think this one over here is this one. Where's the one I just placed? Okay, that one. That one has a swoopy on it, yeah? Uh, yeah, it does, okay. So the other thing I'm, I'm learning with this canvas is actually it is easier for me to work on um, not with direct overhead light like I have now. Obviously, there's a little bit of glare. But the saturation is just a little bit higher on the symbols, or maybe it's something about how the canvas kind of absorbed some of the ink. Um, I've had canvases from other companies that, that are similar in, in how they work like this. And my approach is, actually, you know what? My diamond painting Deutschland canvases, I ran into a similar thing. It wasn't a, it was a very different printing issue the symbol on those canvases were blurry these symbols are not blurry at all but in both cases i found these canvases easier to work on in natural daylight um yeah so but i really wanted to work on this in a whip and chat so that i could show you guys i could learn along with you guys um my throat is starting to get a little bit sore i forgot to pop a cough drop before I started. Um, <clears throat> yes, you're hearing a plastic water bottle right now. I'm like, I need to bleach bath. I, I might not even just bleach bath those straws. Um, I'm honestly probably just going to buy replacements and not care that they don't match. I'm just going to go on Amazon and buy new replacement straws because I don't even want to risk it. <clears throat> <clears throat> but yes, so kids are... Happy it's summer. Mike has been running around and enjoying the warm enough weather where you can just splash, 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 splash in that pool outside. He's such a water baby. Um, and he's he's absolutely loving it. <clears throat> um, what else is going on? Oh, they've been asking you to, to go to the beach. Micah got this cute little, little like beach toy set from his, his teacher as like an end of school gift. And it has like a bucket and some... Uh, a couple of, like little shovels and some of those little like sand molds that you can like make you press in the sand it makes like a shape um that are like different dinosaurs and now he keeps going beach soon beach soon <laughs> and so we're definitely gonna have to get these kiddos to the beach sometime soon and it's hysterical because micah does enjoy the beach connor is a kid after his mom's heart i I don't care for the beach and that's a mild way of putting it. I don't, I don't like the beach. I actively dislike the beach. Um, and Connor kind of does too, even though I've, I've always tried to put like my best face on 
<laughs> Though I have discovered I have very, very little poker face. Um, but I have tried to be very encouraging and optimistic and stuff. But it's funny because Micah keeps going beach soon, beach soon. And I said something to Connor about like, hey, you want to, maybe we'll go to the beach next week. Um, is that something that you would like to do? And he's like, yeah, I'll go. I want to go to the beach. It's like, well, what do you think you're going to do when you go to the beach? He's like, mm, play on the playground. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, the thing that has absolutely nothing to do with the actual act of being on the beach. <laughs> He's like, well, they have swings on the playground. I was like, well, it depends on what beach we go to, but maybe. <laughs> so uh, we'll probably, we'll try to find a beach that will have everyone happy and content. Connor and I will play on the playground. Adam and Micah can play in the sand. It'll be great. It'll be great. Adam, by the way, keeps asking... He's like, so um, when am I going to get to do an unboxing on your channel again? Because uh, the unboxing he did, which has been years, has it been two years at this point? Um, years ago, they did an unboxing of a, of a kit on my channel. And uh, that keeps kind of getting like rediscovered from time to time. There'll be some more comments on it. And I'll mention, I was like, hey, some people saw your unboxing again. Um, he's like, oh, I want to do another one. And... I keep thinking of it, but then it keeps not happening. Uh, so I don't, maybe I should pick out like three or four kits from my stash that haven't been unboxed on my channel before or something and just let him pick. Um, but that first unboxing, I think, will always be the funniest because he went into it really blind and it was really on sort of in my diamond painting journey. And so he he knows a lot more about it now just because I talk about it more in sort of casual conversation um and he just you know he's around when I'm filming a lot and he's like he's a good guy like he's a supportive husband and he's like he tries to be interested in in this because because it has been such an intense special interest of mine for three years now um and I appreciate so much that he's like I want to at least try to have some, I want to have some interest and understanding of this thing that you, you know, spend a lot of time on and obviously like means a lot to you and stuff. Um, so that first unboxing he did though, he really didn't know anything about anything. And I thought that it was just that much more entertaining because of it, because he's like, what is, what is this? What is this? And now it's like, he could probably, he could probably do an unboxing and, like in the style that I do unboxings because <laughs> he's heard me do them often enough. Uh, but still, I think that, I think he could do a fun one that's more unfiltered. Oh, excuse me. Yeah, see now some of the symbols that I have left, I'm just going, that'll just be easier to see in natural light tomorrow. But I think I can grab a few more. Um, will that be under the browns? Yep, that's kind of more of a brown than a yellow. Yeah, okay. Um, so we'll see. Both kids are still a little bit under the weather, by the way. Unfortunately, Micah still has that runny nose that he kind of was ending the school year off with. And Connor, Connor has kind of this persistent cough. I'm probably going to take him in this week um, to be seen. He doesn't have any other symptoms at all. Um, it's just this really persistent dry cough. And so it could be allergies, but it's gone on long enough that I'm like, hmm... I just think that you should probably, let's just go talk to our pediatrician just to be, just to be sure. Um, so I don't want to do anything that will expose them. We were actually, we had to miss out on something yesterday because of it. Uh, we were going to do like an early Father's Day celebration with Adam's dad and actually the whole family. It was going to be um, uh, Adam's like sister and her kids and then his parents and then us. But because both of the kids, both of our kids were sick, we didn't really want to expose my nephews or anyone else like because we, we were going to a park like, we don't want to get anyone else sick <laughs> like that's that's not that's not cool so i stayed home with the kids and adam went down so he and his dad still got to spend some time together for father's day a day early and adam has been helping a friend move today and that was the whole like oh you know we're all free on saturday too so let's just celebrate father's day that day we're not precious about making sure things happen like day, a, a particular day of or anything like that. Um, but yeah, before we go out and like do any fun summary activities this week, I definitely want to make sure that my kiddos are healthy. Um, I'm not infecting the masses. <laughs> uh, 
Um, but as far as content goes this week, like I said, I'm, I don't have anything else in my back pocket as far as already filmed things, but I do have a lot of things in mind. Like they just have to actually be filmed. So, uh, we'll see as far as, um, what's actually going to be coming this week. Um, but I, I have some unboxings. I should do a post review of my, um, craftably kit that I finished over a week ago. Now that was the other thing is I didn't diamond paint. I didn't diamond paint for over three days. And that's weird for me. Um, because I don't know about, you know, you guys, especially those of you that have been diamond painting for a long time too, but it kind of just, or other hobbies or crafts that you have that sort of become a really regular part of your routine. Um, it can just be really, it can be a bummer it can, and, and just be unfortunate when you're too sick to do those things, even something that's supposed to be relaxing. And it's not like diamond painting is a lot of work, but I couldn't, I couldn't even be vertical for it. So I just, I didn't get to diamond paint for several days. And then I thought, oh no, I'm getting behind. And I was like, okay, calm down. Like, it's fine. You're, you'll get back to it and you'll just, you'll finish projects when you finish projects. It's totally fine. But you guys, we are coming up on the one hour mark and I appreciate that you took some time to spend, spend some time with me and I hope that you're doing well. Um, we spent an hour and didn't even really get quite half this section done. So you can see that this, this kind of project definitely is going to be, a, a little bit bigger undertaking, but I'll tell you what, it really does tap into a different part of the brain and it's really satisfying to see it come together like this section over here this bottom corner probably has as many colors as this section up here is going to have maybe a little bit less but you know that's probably a good 70 colors i bet just in this corner section i think it looks gorgeous like all of that red and orange shading um and so i encourage you to be open to a max color project like this if you have the opportunity to pick one up and work on one um and so I'm, I'm not mad this is i will make this a bit of a longer term project though because i have so much else that i really want to be working on at the same time in the coming months so no promises on how long it's going to take me to finish this one but i'm just going to enjoy enjoy the the journey but yeah thanks for spending some time with me today if you made it all the way to the end let's do a rainbow emoji because how can you not with with everything that's been going on today. Um, this, yeah, this size tray was, I think, perfect for this kit. Um, I have a little bit of color blocking in here that's like, oh yeah, maybe a slightly larger tray would be nice. But overall, this kit, a tray this size would be more more than big enough. Um, I don't think anything else I really worked with was new. Oh, you guys, actually, that did stay kind of rainbowy. <laughs> that kind of did stay rainbowy, even though I've been swishing and working with it. But no, the putty's good. The, the Nashmaw's mud is good. All the stuff is, is working how I expect it to. So anyway, um, let me know how you're doing in the comments, what you were working on while we whipped and chatted and have a great week. Be sure to subscribe, especially if you're not already subscribed. You'll probably enjoy it here and I would love to have you and have a great week. I hope you're staying safe and healthy and doing all the things to take care of yourself and I'll chat with you again soon. All right. Bye. Mm -hmm.